the Gym City, Dayton, Ohio. When you talk about R&B, Dayton has some history in producing bands like Lakeside, Heatwave, Zap, Fazo, and Slave. Dayton is also the home to other celebrities like Cat Williams and Ron Harper to name a few. But it was this one group that put Dayton on the map. This group made Ohio known. This group is the Ohio Players. Now, let's cue that intro. Originally formed in 1959, the very first group coming out of Dayton called the Ohio Untouchables. The members was Robert Ward, Marshall Jones, Clarence Satchel, Cornelius Johnson, and Ralph P.V. Middlebrooks. The groups had a record deal with Lupine Records out of Detroit, Michigan. Now, Robert was the group's leader and frontman. While they would perform, if he didn't like the crowd, he would just walk off stage, forcing the other members to stop performing. This would build up tensions with the group members, and one day in 1964, by performing, Robert would walk off stage again. But this time the group didn't follow. They was tired of his actions and they continued to perform. Afterwards, Robert and Marshall would exchange words back and forth. And they would get into a fist fight. This caused the group to break up. Marshall, Clarence, and Ralph started their own group. They would grab drummer Greg Webster and guitarist Leroy Sugarfoot Bonner. Now that they have their members, they would need to go find what type of music they was going to bring. They didn't want to continue doing blues because Robert had that sound on lockdown and Dayton. So they decided to play funk music. The main goals of every member of the group was to be the best. So they would work all seven days a week, playing anywhere they could. In 1967, the group would officially name themselves the Ohio Players. Stating that everyone wanted to be a player, so they was all ladies men, so why not? <laughs> yeah, we, uh... Uh, Marshall here was with the group called uh, The Untouchables. And like uh, when they left, I tried to get uh, Sugarfoot and uh, we decided to get together and form the group The Ohio Players. The group caught the attention of Capitol Records. They went on to record the album Observations of Time in 1969. The album flopped, so Capitol released the group. Following the release from Capitol Records, The Ohio Players would add more steam to their roster in 1970. The group would add Walter Jr. Morrison. In 1971, the group was signed to Westbound Records. Westbound Records was home to the great George Clinton. In 1971, the group they would get to work right away releasing the single Pain. This single reached 35 on the R&B charts. Pain became the group's first song to be a top 40 hit. Now, the Ohio Players was very known. They was, they was known for their album covers. And for this time period, this was very explicit. But, it was a great strategy because it sold records. We were uh, signed with a company in, company in Detroit called Westbound Label. And at the time we were with Westbound, George Clinton and the Parliaments happened to be on the same label. Now, George Clinton um, and the Parliaments, they had the hairdos and they had suits and ties on and they were doing the, the temptation type of thing. Uh -huh. And we came along, and we, we were on the same level, mind you. We came along with this tune, Funky Worm. And I remember that tune because people used to bring all their kids to the matinees, right? The group would follow Pain with Funky Worm and Ecstasy, both released in 1973. Now, Funky Worm reached 15 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and Ecstasy would reach 31 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. In 1974, Joe McGregor-Webster left the group due to declining health. He was replaced with James Diamond Williams. Fun fact, when James joined the group, he was only making $25 a week. That's only $132 in today's money. That same year, in 1974, Junie Morrison would lead the group to pursue a solo career. They would replace Junie with superfan Billy Beck. Now, when you think of the Ohio players iconic lineup, they was Billy Beck, James Diamond Williams, Marshall Rock Jones, Leroy Sugarfoot Boner, Marvin Pierce, Ralph Pee Wee Middlebrook, and Clarence Satchel. Sax became the group's leader as he did all the group's costume, choreography, you name it. 1974, the Ohio players would leave West Brown after dropping the album Climax. They would sign the Mercury Records and drop the album Fire. 
This album reached number one on the Billboard Top LPs. Now, Fire the Song reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. The Ohio players had the 70s on lock with their unique funk sound. As Skin Tight reached number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts in 1974, the album Honey peaked at number two on the Billboard Top LPs. Who She Cool in 1976, that reached number 18 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and Love Roller Coaster, that reached number one on Billboard Hot 100 charts. Fun fact, everyone believes that in the song Love Roller Coaster, something bad happens to a woman, which is why we all heard a scream in the beginning of the song. Well, this is false, but this rumor did help the Ohio players sell a lot of records. Well, there's an urban myth that has been circulating throughout my life about Love Roller Coaster and the scream, the woman screaming in the background. Now, with the group having some success, you may wonder who gets the credit for all of this. Well, the group would hatch an amazing plan. They would give everyone in the group writing credits, and they would all split the group's warranties equally. This built the brotherhood with each member from the group. Fun fact, the Ohio players, they was known for giving songs and albums one name. They would put everything together from the guitars to the drums first. Then the very last step they would do was write the song. Another fun fact, the Ohio players was one of the few groups at the time that called their own shots. For writing songs, creative control, and producing, they did it all. With the group being very successful, they began to turn their back on things that got them where they was at. They would begin to stop rehearsing, and most members of the group began to using drugs. Once the drugs took over, there wasn't no going back. The group's image would take a big hit, as in 1978, Saks and Sugarfoot would get pulled over with coke on them. Now, they didn't go to jail, but it put Dayton on the spotlight in a negative way. In 1979, the group would get in trouble with the IRS. It was uncovered that Saks was writing false checks, stealing money for the group. Saks' wife, at the time, would say he would bring home checks every week for her to live off of. Satch and I had filed a joint return. So when the IRS came, you know, the man was saying, uh, you have the assets, so we're going to, you know, take your house, your car, and this, that, and the other, you know. And all I knew about was money that Satch brought home. He brought a check home every week, and that's the money that I lived on. After the group found out about Satch, they would kick him out the group. But everything isn't clear yet. More members of the group fell in trouble to the IRS. They got a, a payment for, from the record company. They split the money up among themselves and kept it. Mercury never withheld taxes from their royalties. And if it had been a thought on Mercury's part, they wouldn't have listened to it. The same man did everybody's taxes. And when IRS came at them individually, they were charged with the money that they each did not report. The group will eventually part ways, making other forms of the higher players. But the original Ohio players was gone. The brotherhood of the group was gone. The Ohio players got inducted to the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame in 2013, but as of today, they are not inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The Ohio players inspired groups like Cameo, Department Mix, Zap, and many more. Their music is still playing in TV shows and movies today. And just to think, this group who did all this came from a little city named Dayton, Ohio. I would like to take a moment and give my condolences to all of the fallen members of the Ohio players. Thanks to all my subscribers for watching and those that's not a subscriber, thank you as well. If you like what you see and would like to see more, check out a few more videos and until then, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.